What are all the benefits to GMOs according to the industry? And is any of it true? Well, the biotech industry will jump on anything that's current and claim that GMOs are the answer. So climate change, pandemic, um, a certain disease in agriculture. Um, you know, they wanted to genetically engineer cows without horns so they wouldn't hurt, hurt each other if they were packed into factory farms and you wouldn't have to cut the horns off. Uh, they want to genetically engineer out the mothering instinct from from livestock so you can take the, the children away. They want to, well, there's, there's malaria or there's Zika. Let's genetically engineer mosquitoes. Let's change the rate of growth of salmon so it goes to market more quickly. It's like Lego mentality, but that's not how world, the world works. Now, there are benefits to genetic engineering. Human gene therapy, in some cases, won't kill you. Sometimes it did. They, some of the study, some of the research and experiments did actually cause kids to have leukemia. But theoretically, if you take one person and you make a change and you correct a defective gene and it's not inheritable, you're not changing the nature of nature, you may save a life. You may be able to produce chemicals in a closed system from genetically engineering microorganisms that you can't produce in economically or at all. Now, unfortunately, the that could lead to some very negative consequences. If, the, if that microbe changes, uh, if it gets out, there was an L-tryptophan supplement that was genetically engineered by genetic, by bacteria. And the process almost certainly created the contaminants that caused an epidemic, killing about 100 Americans and causing five to 10,000 to fall sick. They don't check for those things. They don't acknowledge and honor the things that can go wrong. But theoretically, it might have a positive impact. Using it for research is amazing. You can understand so much more about the DNA. But where I draw the line is outdoor release or release into the food supply of GMOs or their products. Now, if their products are released outdoors, have you studied? Like if it's not something that can be, uh, that can reproduce, how dangerous is it? Well, the L-tryptophan was an example. And then anything that's being used in containment needs to be highly secure because you have to anticipate that it will escape or it might escape. And what will happen if you've genetically engineered yeast to produce CBD or ashwagandha or vanilla or, or uh, saffron flavor? What if that escapes and now it's being producing the same thing in your gut microbiome or in, in the oceans or in, in the deserts? So it's like if you look at things with narrow blinders, there's all sorts of benefits. If you take the blinders off, you have to be so careful. And I'm not against genetic engineering per se. Just to be clear, there are ways it can be used for research and in limited ways to produce things, but it has to be in the context of great safety. Are there any studies on animals that have been fed GMO versus non-GMO foods specifically? There are several studies that show that the animal's structure and function is different. So much so that a, a peer-reviewed article by Dr. Jack Heinemann and Dr. Turia uh, Trevik declared that these were different organisms. Animals that were fed GMOs are actually different organisms, and they enumerated all the different ways. There was a two-year study on rats from Dr. Seralini, and he found that rats that were fed genetically engineered Roundup-ready corn had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. Those that were fed the Roundup had the same things, and those were fed the Roundup that had been sprayed on the you know, corn that had been sprayed with Roundup had the same thing. So it was both Roundup and the GMOs that caused problems. We have high rates of mortality, damaged immune systems, potentially precancerous cell growth, tumors, cancer, um, 
activation of the immune system, uh, changes in enzymes in the organs, uh, damage to the intestinal walls, so many different areas. Basically, every system and every organ that's been studied typically shows some change. It's not always clear if that change is going to damage the animal because most of the animal feeding studies are either 90 days or 28 days. And I remember talking to a former Monsanto scientist, and he said that he was aware that when they fed rats genetically engineered corn in 90 days, there was significant damage to the rats. So instead of withdrawing the corn, they rewrote the study to hide the effects. And he was aware that in Southern Africa, including South Africa, many people use corn as, as a staple three times a day. And that the amount of corn fed to the rats, which is typically maximum for Monsanto studies of 33%, was well below the amount of corn eaten by humans, not just for 90 days, but for their whole lives. So he was concerned that the rat study was a, a, a very, very dangerous marker for what might be happening in South Africa and those countries. I remember speaking to a veterinarian in the U.S. who had a client in South Africa, and he was feeding all, as they all do in the farm, the, the corn grown on the, on the farm was used as the basis for their meals three times a day. He was growing 100% GMO corn, and he had a huge death rate, a huge sickness rate, had to have 20% more people um, hired. He said uh, there was 60 people hired instead of the 50 that he needed, and that once or twice a month, he would notice that he would be talking to an employee and their eyes would move in different directions than each other. They'd lose the parallel tracking. And he knew that within one or two days, they would be dead. So this was like shocking news. And he didn't know why. No one knew why. But the veterinarian told him to switch to non-GMO corn. And when he switched non-GMO corn for the animals who got better from their problems, the workers got better too. Suggesting that the concern by the Monsanto scientists about the high intake of genetically engineered corn was very real and extremely serious.